Father Jack back. For me to be back. Now, uh, I just wanted to come because I know last week we had uh, focused in on the death penalty. And there was a gentleman who was upset with the presentation last week. Um, I will let you know that I did have a conversation with him about that. Um, and I think we're working towards a proper understanding. I think it was an offhand comment that the presenter had made in regards uh, to police, which we've edited out of whatever we're presenting on our site. But I want to let you know that before we presented that, uh, my focus was on just making sure that we look at the catechism in terms of understanding um, what the proper application is for that now and our proper historical understanding is of uh, the limited use of the death penalty, where um, that right now in our current context, uh, it's looked at as something that uh, if it were used would be in very rare cases, okay? Um, it's different than other situations. When we look at applications, for example, uh, for defense, and we look at uh, just war theory, right? The basic concept is this. None of us would ever say we're for war, Okay? So in a certain way, we don't say we're for capital punishment. What we say is there may be circumstances where war is necessary. And the church throughout our history says there may be circumstances where capital punishment is necessary. What we're saying in our current cultural environment is that that would be very rare if, if practically non-existent. Okay? And that's just the view of it because what is the purpose when you look in the catechism, they put it under defense. In terms of defense, uh, war is the last resort for proper defense of the innocent. And in the case of capital punishment, it's the same thing. That would be a last resort in the case of protecting the community from an unjust aggressor. So that, that's basically our policy. It's a very emotional issue, um, and I understand that. But we have to do this in a dispassionate way. There's things that are very emotionally weighted because there's victims involved in it. And that involves when we're, we have terrorists or when you have uh, a murderer. There can be certainly a lot of emotion in terms of those who are victimized by these acts. But we have to have a response which is, on the one hand, just. But also, we as Christians also look at what is merciful. Um, if you look at the story of uh, St. Paul, uh, he basically was complicit in the murder of others. And we're glad that he converted and became a great supporter of the church rather than one who was murdering members of it. If you look at the story of Alessandro, I don't know if they brought this example up, but in the story of Maria Goretti, you have to remember that her assailant, Alessandro, who stabbed her multiple times, um, he went to jail and he converted. And he made a confession and he came out as completely contrite for his sins and was a contributing uh, member of the community, a person who had murdered and an innocent 12-year-old girl uh, with, with brutal stabbing, if you ever heard the story. So what we see is, is this, this aspect of conversion of those who have committed heinous crimes. And we're, we're not in any way uh, taking away the concern we have for the victim. In the case of the murder of Maria Goretti, when Alessandro got out of jail, he went to the mother of the child who had been murdered and asked her forgiveness. This is what our goal is. Our goal is the conversion of a Saul into a St. Paul. The conversion of an Alessandro. In, and, and we believe that's possible, that all things are possible with God. At the same time, we believe to protect the community from those who could hurt us, whether they be terrorists or... Right? So we, we're looking at those two aspects. And there's no simple answer to it. That's why if you read the Catechism... It's a little thorny to get through all of what's discussed there, okay? So I just wanted to let you know, first of all, that the gentleman who was upset, I met with him, we talked, um, and I, I think we're okay in that regard. And I think he, there was an emotional trigger that came at that point. Um, if there's anything that comes up during one of the discussions, and it's very emotional, I would just encourage you to deal with the emotion. And then afterwards, once you've dealt with the emotional, I mean, certainly I've never preached a homily that triggered any emotions in anyone whatsoever. <laughs> I've never preached anything that had somebody leave before the end of Mass. That's never happened. But I will say this, that I have made mistakes when I'm speaking extemporaneously. And secondly, I like when I can talk to that person peaceably after we get over the emotion and get down to what does Christ teach, 
What's our common understanding? How can we share as brother and brother in the reality of Jesus Christ? Does that make sense? That's what our goal is. It's a big church. There's different passions, different emphases, uh, but it's a big church. We love this church. I've gone on for too long, but there you go. This is the second homily that I have for you today. Thank you. (laughs) 